The following show is a Pod Avenue production. You are cordially invited to have dinner with the king. Pull up a chair and join WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler and Glenn Moore. Enjoy. Here we are back at Jerry Lawler's Memphis Barbecue Company here in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Glenn Moore, joined here by WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King Lawler. And we're running solo this week. We're supposed to have Bill after. Come on, but since uh, the viral meningitis is going around, uh, it hit me yesterday. Has Bill got, has Bill got it? No, I, I, had, oh. I, was, I was down oh, with the sickness. It. I was down with the doing? sickness. What are you doing here today? Are you sure you're fully recovered? Are you are you contagious or anything? Well, I didn't have the viral meningitis. I had something else that was more of a 24-hour variety. I'm not sure if you there. Okay, don't 24 wanna, hour. Don't want to scare the people sitting around us, but uh, <laughs> you've already scared me. <laughs> well, speaking of sickness, Jerry, uh, the WWE is the viral meningitis is going around. I was uh, wondering if you're going to be uh, you know at uh, TLC on Sunday, and if you were. To wear a mask because everybody seems to be sick in WWE. <laughs> no kidding. Well, this was the first time. Uh, apparently, none of the announce uh, announcers or or any of the announce staff were came down with the with the illness. I think that was probably something bug that they picked up, uh, you know, on one of the overseas uh, tours or something like that. But uh, this was, uh, you know, a lot of people asked me if I was going to be doing it, and I and my the truth is. You know, I really don't know. A lot of times they'll call me at the last minute, like right. with the time that the flood was down in Houston, and then that Rosenbaum guy got uh, sick or whatever. What's his name? Is that what are you laughing at? He, Why are you snick? Peter Rosenberg from Rosenberg. Uh, Rosenberg. He has a very popular right, radio what's show. Guy? What's the other guy's name? Not Sam. Who's he? Yeah, I mean Sam. What? Sam Robertson. That's, that's his gimmick. Not Sam. It's Sam Roberts. They're both high Roberts. Ones. Hot, cool. so I just I can't I have trouble with their last names. One's one is Roberts, and I for some reason I want to say Robertson, and Rosenbaum's is. <laughs> Jeez, it's not Rosenbaum. What is, what is it? Rosenberg. Rosenberg. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Kid. Well, I don't. It's not like I hang out with these guys all the time. I mean, even even when I'm on the show with them, I basically just you know we walk up and I say, "Hey, Mr. Rosenbaum," and and he looks at me funny, and now I realize why. Because this is, I'm saying his name wrong, right? But I mean, you know, we just sit down together uh, uh, next at the table and we start uh, doing the show. It's and and I never, I don't see him beforehand. I don't see him afterwards. It's not like we're big buddies. So I apologize. Uh, somebody told me that he thinks that I don't like him yeah. because of that I mispronounced his last name. Yeah, we're was, just gonna, we're gonna have to get better acquainted. I'm sorry. That's all. He was on a uh, ESPN radio show, I believe, and uh, a Ooh. listener a listener mentioned that a listener mentioned. That you don't like, uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, Mr. Rosenberg, because you don't know his last name. <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't like him. If I listen, I can't tell you how many my biggest fans, half of my biggest fans around the country, call me Jerry Lawyer. <laughs> and I know they, you know, I know they like me, but they just they just mispronounce my last name. I don't know why. So I mean, it's not that I don't like Peter or Sam. Which one am I talking about? <laughs> oh. Sam is the guy. That, Sam's the guy that looks like Art Garfunkel. His hair and everything. Looks like Shy, uh, Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> With the crazy hair. No, they're both WWE talking heads. Which I'm sure they're very nice guys. They are. Both of them. I, I would like to hang around with them more. I'd like to be on the show with them more, actually. <laughs> well, thank goodness you weren't uh, there because uh, Roman Reigns has a viral meningitis. Bray Wyatt has a, a viral meningitis. JoJo. Uh, has the viral meningitis. Uh, Bo Dallas has the viral meningitis. So, um, so it, it caused them, I mean, they had to make a lot of changes to the uh, to the pay-per-view, as a matter of fact, didn't they? I mean, you know, they had to bring some guys over from from Raw, uh, AJ. Uh, or, um, from SmackDown. AJ Styles, yeah, from SmackDown over, over to do the um, to do the pay-per-view. So it was that was a pretty devastating illness there. But here's another thing. This is what I wanted to talk to you about. Kurt Angle made his uh, WWE in-ring return. Now, of course, we know that he was with TNA for X amount of years. And then also, he was wrestling the indie scene. Uh, you know, I'm sure you made some appearances with Kurt while he wrestled. Absolutely. He had a, a, a great steel cage match with uh, with Cody up in Northeast Wrestling uh, within the yeah, past I year. Was, 
I was on that show right yeah. there. I, I was on the match right before then. Uh, watched watched him go out and perform. And, and matter of fact, he and I rode like an hour and a half limo ride back to the airport after that show. Just just he and I together. And we talked at length about that. I mean, how you know how much he wanted to uh, to still wrestle there, and and he was just. I mean, you know, he was he was happy with uh, the contract and happy to be, uh, you know. Back with the WWE, but he was not crazy about the fact that he. I guess they had already told him that they didn't think that uh, they wanted him to do things other than actually get in the ring and wrestle. So uh, I know that he had been lobbying for that, and I know that he really wanted to do that. So I'm, I'm just, I'm happy for Kurt. He is Kurt is a really cool guy. I mean, he's really nice guy to be around, and and um, I, I really like Kurt a lot. So I'm, I know that he was excited to uh, get back in the ring there and perform and and. Uh, did you see? Did you see his match? I did, of course. I've Kurt Angle, one of my favorites from, you know, of course. You know, when I, you know, talk to you, I talk about Attitude Era and, uh, you know, the the glory years of my childhood professional wrestling. Kurt Angle was a big part of that. I would put, you know, wrestling with uh, with my friends. You know, one of my finishers was the ankle lock. Yeah. Well, what did you? I mean, what did you think of his performance? I thought he did great for you know he a did guy. Great. <laughs> right. I mean, he did great. Uh, well, wait a minute now. You you said for what? For a guy? What? <laughs> for, well, <laughs> he well, did great for a guy. Well, what? well, for considering he did great. I mean, obviously, the, when you wrestle on the indie scene, you can do whatever you want, um, you know, in, in certain matches because you don't have the WWE style of wrestling over your head. So, but Kurt, you know, he put a couple guys through tables. Uh, he won the match with the triple power bomb with the shield. Uh, he de- defeated the Miz. I, you know, he did great. He did great. Period. He did. He, he did. And and I was I was proud of him, and I was g- happy with the fact that uh, the WWE, even though you, I mean, I, we're, I guess we're saying that the reason, the main reason he got pressed into action was because of the illness. But uh, whether that be the case or not, I was glad to see him back in there, and I thought he did great. And it was like, you know what? The only problem I have with that. Um. And I, I and I know you know from my years of promoting wrestling and everything, and I know you know part of part of it, especially when you have to change a card, you're you know the the number one thing in the minds of the company, the WWE, the the promoters of any kind of wrestling show or whatever, is to make the fans happy, make them have a good time, make them uh, feel that they spent their money wisely and watching the show and that sort of thing. That's the, that's, that's the number one thing in the minds of the company. That's the number one thing in the minds of the, the wrestlers too. You know, they want, they want the fans to enjoy the show. And so I think that, you know, probably what happened was they, they said, Hey man, you know, this is a changed card and we're having to use guys that weren't, weren't advertised. And so we gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do to send the fans home happy to make them enjoy the show. And, and by that, you know, I think that's where the, the three man team, uh, won the match. But in my mind, I'm thinking <clears throat> that's, I don't know. I, I just I just have a problem with that. And I've you know I've been involved in a million handicap matches and all that sort of thing. And I you know what whatever happens happens. But to me, when I looked at that, um, it just I don't know. It just almost went too far in defying logic. And I'm not taking anything away from Kurt and the Shield and all of that sort of stuff. But it, it would just compare it to another sport. Suppose you took the New England Patriots and you're going to put them against, let's just say, the Cleveland Browns, who are right now probably the worst team in football. Right, right? But you said, okay, New England, you're only going to get to play with seven guys. Okay. And Cleveland's going to have their full 11. Now, who do you think would win that game? Well, Patriots probably. <laughs> what? Gonna We're going to be honest, waffle. King. If you're... With a waffle fry. No, they could not. The Patriots could not beat anybody with only using only seven players. Somehow, Impossible. somehow Kaiser would still throw to the other team. <laughs> no, they would. They would not. They would. They would just. They could just run the ball, and they would have enough blockers yeah. out there to knock everybody. No, you couldn't do that. I mean, and you had five. You know, you had five top guys on that other team. Yeah, you had Miz. You had. Uh, yeah. You had Sheamus, Cesaro, Kane, 
the guy who's yeah. running, running for mayor, and, and then you had Braun Strowman. Oh my God, that's your five top guys, and you're going to beat them with three? Well, you had they had, they had some you know Kane and Braun going at it, so you had some turmoil you know on that team. They had a dump truck uh, come out. I think that in, in, in incapacitated uh, Braun Strowman. So I mean, you had some gimmicks that came out there to kind of get rid of. Some of the guys to make yeah, it more. Yeah, to even the playing field. Right, right. So I mean, overall, I thought so it was entertaining. It would be like if the Browns were, they, you know, they were about to score a touchdown with eleven guys on seven, and then all of a sudden, uh, four more of the Patriots players came out of the stands or something. Yes, yeah, jumped in on them. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, so, okay, I don't have a problem with it, but I got off track anyway. I, I would, I, I really enjoyed seeing Kurt Angle back, and and you know what's funny, but what what we started to talk about was you said. Well, I thought he did great for a, uh, you know. And, well, here's and, a, he, I was going to say, w- was he on the, well, you know, we all know that you're on the WWE No Touch list, and yeah, al- the, along with uh, Daniel the, the Bryan. No Touch list. Yeah, I wonder if there really is such a thing. I'm sure, well, Daniel Bryan's in the same boat. You know, he can't do anything physical in the ring. Um, but what was was Kurt Angle? I mean, I, was, I'm sure Kurt was in that same boat before getting back in the ring. Um, you know, No Touch list just because of, the neck or whatever injuries, even though he, like you said, you wrestle on the indie scene, he wrestled in the indie scene, Daniel Bryan wants to get back in wrestling, but if WWE thinks you're a liability, they're not going to risk something happening with you and then having it the fault of the WWE. Right, I, I understand, yeah. So, and, 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 and when you said that, it, it reminded me of something that I've been thinking about ever since, um, I think, a, a couple of days ago. Because, first of all, I mean, Kurt hadn't wrestled in a while, so he has, I mean, you know, it's hard to stay in ring shape unless you do that continuously. I mean, you know, you need to wrestle literally at least once. I mean, to to stay in shape for for what the WWE, for that kind of grind, I mean, you need to wrestle at least once or at least twice a week, every single week to stay in shape for that, you know, that kind of physicality that you're going to have in a WWE match. And Kurt hadn't wrestled in months, I'm sure, a, a long time. Yeah. Maybe that match that I wrote, where I rode with him with Cody Rhodes may have been the last actual match that he had had. So for him to get in there and perform at the level that he did, I was I was uh, really proud of him. I thought he did fantastic. But what what it brought to mind was, and I was this is sort of changing the subject off the WWE. But you know, we we talked about on my podcast uh, of and had Austin Idol on, and we talked about the big match that we had over in Jonesboro, Arkansas this past week. Me against Tommy Rich with yeah. Austin Idol there. Yeah. And so that 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 all went well. It was really really a good time. Uh, we didn't. We had a great great crowd. wasn't as good wasn't as big as the crowd we had had with the big Memphis reunion last year. But it was still a it was still a, a good crowd there in Jonesboro at the Earl Bell Community Center and K Fine Radio did a really good job of promoting the thing. And so. Um, the match turned out to be me against uh, Tommy Rich and then Austin Idol just a few minutes into the match comes moseying out after he had said, you remember he said he didn't know whose corner he was going to be in or if he was going to be in anybody's corner. Well, he did come out during the match and just sat down, not in anybody's corner. He just sat there like at ringside watching the match. And so, um, and then towards, then towards the end of the match, he saw us, he saw an opening there and he did come into the ring and nobody really knew what he was going to do, but he winds up taking his belt off and starts whacking me with the with his with his belt. And then he and Tommy Rich started to uh, uh, I think they were going to post me again, you know, pull my legs bet- between the ring posts. And fortunately, fortunately, yeah, fortunately, uh, Bill Dundee and Brandon Baxter came out and kind of stopped that and. Um, you know, I, then I got a hold of the belt and whacked him around a little bit. But I say all this to to um, go back to what we were talking about with Kurt. I I had a chance to watch the match. It, somebody put it up on um, on Facebook or something, and that was the first time I had really seen it. It was like day before yesterday when I watched the match, and I think I had talked to Austin Idol about this on the podcast uh, a couple of weeks ago. But when I watch this match back, I'm think I'm just thinking in my mind, oh my gosh, are we going in like slow motion? 
or whatever. You know, when when we were when I was doing the match and everything, everything felt fine. It was like we're in there, we're telling the story, the people are responding and everything. But then when I watched it back, it was like, oh man, I gotta speed things up. I gotta start doing more stuff. I gotta. I mean, there was a lot of walking and talking, which is uh, you know sort of what I kind of had become famous for. But you know, I got a lot of I got a lot of indie matches coming up, and and I need to. I'm gonna have to turn it turn up the. Uh, uh, I'm gonna have to turn up the speed a little bit in these matches because it was kind of, it was kind of embarrassing to watch it back, to realize even though I mean you know at the time everybody seemed perfectly happy with it, but um, uh, I, I realized that's not you know that's not the kind of match that you could you could have in the WWE. Trust me. Well, Jerry, I'm going to take these waffle fries from you then because these can't be good for your cardio. <laughs> You're right. Uh, yes. Can we, get, I, I can we get a salad for the king? It's got to do with the cardio. It's got to do with the belly-o. I got I to lose some. We need to lose some poundage here. Uh, so you're right. The waffle fries is not a good idea. No waffle fries. We're in a, can, we, can we get a salad for the king? Do you have salads here? No? Yes, we do. Of course yeah, we do. Can we get, can we get a, a big salad for the king? Thanks. Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Yeah. But do you ever watch your matches? I mean, even even back when you were, you know, Memf- obviously, 70s and 80s, did you ever, you know, go back and, and, you know, not critique your match, but just review what you what you did, especially in, the, you know, in WWE or is that uh, no, just almost, not something almost, you do? Almost never, um, especially back during the day, you know, when we were doing it, the only time I would the only time I would have you would have time to go back. And watch any of your match was when we when we aired it, you know, the highlights or whatever on Saturday morning. You'd see what took place down at the Coliseum. Uh, but and, and speaking of watching matches back, uh, and I had a I had a totally different feeling this time. Just 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 this past Sunday, uh, Bill Dundee and I went over to the WLMT Channel 30 Studios here in Memphis, and we recorded our first uh, first episode of Jerry Lawler's Classic Memphis Wrestling, which is going to start airing. It's going to, the first airing is going to be Saturday, November the 11th at 8 p.m. on WLMT uh, Channel 30 here in Memphis. And it consists of going back and pulling up some of the old Memphis wrestling shows, shows and footage and matches from the past. And then me and a guest sit there and sort of critique it and and talk over it as the matches are going on. So what it wound up being was me and Bill Dundee sitting there watching. Uh, we watched three of our matches from the 80s. Well, one was actually from 1979. Then one was a loser leave town match from uh, like 1985. And then another one was um, or like 83. And then another one was a hair versus hair match from 1985 or six. And so Bill and I sat there and watched those and I think that's what that's what really made me notice the difference in, in watching those matches uh, from back in the 80s and the physicality that were in those matches and they were they it was really awesome and really a fun show and I think the people in Memphis and all around the area are going to love watching those shows but then and then watching what uh, the match that I had uh, last Saturday night over at Jonesboro. So this is going to be November 11th. Uh, November 11th. So every so this how many how many weeks is it going to run for? Do you know yet or? Well, here's the deal. What uh, episode one is going to? I've got the schedule right here in front of me. Air dates. Episode one, uh, which is features me and and Bill Superstar Dundee and some matches uh, from the 70s and 80s. It, the first episode is going to show Saturday, November 11th at 8 p.m. Then it's going to show the following Saturday, November 18th at 5 p.m. And then it's going to show the following Sunday, November 26th. At 12 noon, and then we're going to have a new episode done by then that is going to start showing Saturday, December the 9th. Do you know who your second guest is going to be? I'm, I'm looking at right now, um, we've got some great footage and some great matches of Eddie Gilbert, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert. So we're going to have Doug Gilbert on, uh, Eddie's brother, who Doug, you know, was in the car with Eddie when they ran over me in the parking lot of Channel 5. We're going to go back and show some of that stuff and... and um, some of the great matches that Eddie Gilbert and I had, we had a big, we had a big loser leave town match. That's how we got rid of Jimmy Hart out of Memphis, uh, yeah. a match between me and me and Eddie Gilbert. So we're going to, we're going to go and, and we're going to have Doug on there for that. Then I think the third episode, we're going to feature Dave Brown and have, um, uh, try to get Dave on the show and talk a lot about the things that happened in the studio with Dave and, and with Lance Russell. Uh, so there's, you know, so many, so many great shows that feature, feature Dave and Lance. And we're going to go back and look at some of those on the third episode. Yeah, it was, uh, 
it was it was it, somebody posted a, a video behind the scenes of you and uh, and uh, and Bill Dundee in the studio watching a match, um, a Facebook video. It's like thirty seconds, but it looked yeah. pretty, it looked pretty uh, pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to watching. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be fun. Bill, uh, it winds up it winds up that we're like. Uh, it's almost like doing live TV because by the time you get into this thing, you can't just stop and say, it's not like you're doing it in little sound bites. You can't just stop right. and say, Oh, hang on. Let me, let's go back. Let me do that over. I mean, once you start, you're out there for like the, almost the entire hour watching the, watching the matches and, and Bill, a couple of times, it was funny. A couple of times, Bill just broke down and I guess he forgot we were on TV and he, he spoke Carney a couple of times <laughs> in the whole show, <laughs> which was which was funny, and uh, but but he did a great job. It's it's it turns out to be really good. So no, <clears throat> November eleventh, I got I got I'm eating your waffle fries. I'm getting getting full over here. Uh, so November eleventh, <laughs> a Saturday, eight p.m. on what channel? WLMT channel thirty in Memphis. Channel thirty. So I'm sure a lot of our fans, it's listeners, uh, yep. will will be listen will be watching, but also uh, hopefully it'll be available online. So a lot of our you know we're worldwide. A lot of the people. Who listen and, and listen to the show like to watch the show uh, wherever they're at uh, all over the world so hopefully it'll be available online yeah and I, I think they're I think they're uh, at local memphis.com um, is I, I think that's I'm, I'm gonna have to make sure of that but uh, I know I know like I'm like looking at uh, the, the different guys email addresses at local memphis.com so local memphis.com i believe is what wlmt is all about there so it's a, yeah it's it's gonna be I'm, I'm really really excited about it first time uh, because I've, as i've said so many people here in memphis especially uh talk about the glory days of memphis wrestling and we're gonna go back and um and and revisit some of those glory days from the memphis wrestling years well, you and I are doing some show prep, and we, we we've been teasing it all month about talking about the USWA and and why all of a sudden uh, the the live Saturday morning wrestling for USWA just just came to a, a screeching halt, and you know we decided that we're going to do a whole episode on USWA down the road. So a lot of people are asking, you know, well, well what, what's the story? You guys teasing us? Well, we we feel like it's going to be it's worth it's worthy of its own show. It's I don't think. King wants to have uh, you know a, a condensed version of this for 10 15 minutes when I think a whole show you know will give it give us uh, justice right King well without a doubt yeah um, there's there's such a story that that's really never been told or I've never I've, because for so long it was it was in, in legal entanglement and everything about the USWA company and and that was a company that was started in like 19. 19- I don't know, eighty-seven or eighty-eight, something like that, with the, between Jerry Jarrett and I and the and the uh, Texas, you know, the Von Erichs. They yeah. uh, uh, we kind of combined and started up the USWA company, and then that that company went on to be sold, and and um, and then it, the, the the two buyers got in a big beef between each other and, and couldn't get along and everybody wound up suing everybody and and that's really uh, sort of in a condensed version of what happened to the USWA but I'll go into more detail about it because it was it was a long drawn out ordeal with with the with the USWA company and that's I mean we're not that there our, our show that's on now we go back before the USWA was formed and use the old old Memphis wrestling which was the real glory days from the uh you know mid 70s up through the to the mid 80s that was a that was the cool stuff that we got on the TV show, but but yeah, the USWA was, uh, was when I think back on it, it was kind of a, a a sad situation the way that all unfolded. But yeah, it's 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 enough of a story that it needs its own episode. Definitely lawsuit the pick the lawsuit, and I'm sure you're going to clarify a lot of things that uh, transpired during the lawsuit, and all, uh, eventually, uh, you know why the live show on Saturday uh, it came to an end. So the USWA show will be in the future. We'll uh, and next week. Uh, next week's show is going to be all about Memphis monsters since it's Halloween Woo-hoo. and uh, I'm my favorite holiday. And I know Jerry, your second favorite holiday. Um, I want to talk about all the Memphis monsters cause you're a big monster guy and uh, looking to have a surprise guest. Wait a minute. What do you mean by that? I'm a big monster guy. Well, like, you know, you like when, when it came to <laughs> wacky characters and monster characters. Well, okay, Memphis, yeah. Well, let's just, uh, you know, let's define that a little better. I'm a big monster guy. I'm a big fan of monsters. 
Did I tell you about? Yeah, well, I did tell you a little bit about how, <laughs> how draining it was. But that was that was one of the coolest things about going to Universal Studios uh, a couple weeks ago was, uh, you know, they had it all out all the, the Halloween horror nights at Universal Studios down in Orlando, and we we went down and and took advantage of that. All these uh, seven haunted houses, and and then of course they're you know they're famous for the Universal monsters, the Frankenstein, the Boris Karloff Frankenstein, and the Mummy, and the Wolfman and 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 of course Dracula and all all of those Bride of Frankenstein they have their you know if have you been to Universal Studios down there Glenn I have not oh you gotta go man I mean they have a they they, they have this they have this monster Universal monsters restaurant in there and I mean it's it's just the coolest thing the pictures and then and a lot of the actual props from the old those old movies and and all that sort of stuff is in there but yeah I've always been a a, a monster movie fan and i'll tell you that and i'll tell you during that episode next week about why i i got into the having them even owning these monster masks and and then using them on the different wrestlers in the in the territory but that's a that's another story but then we're going to talk about that next week right right yeah we might have a surprise guest uh maybe maybe on the speaking show. of monsters yeah yeah so looking forward to, to that and jerry i know i've been in your garage and your garage is <laughs> So you're the guy that took those uh, tools. <laughs> there are no tools in your garage, Jerry. Come no, on, you're right. Be honest. Uh, but I, um, you know, you have a, a 10 foot uh, Hulk um, statue. You have all these monster masks. You should, uh, you know, during enter next week's show, you should probably post some of the, some of maybe of your favorite pieces of your monster memorabilia. I will definitely do that. You know, I, I was I was thinking about that. I see that you you do that every now and then. You'll throw up on. Uh, on Twitter and that sort of thing, some pictures talking about uh, who or whatever we had on the on the podcast. So I'll do that uh, after next week. I'll 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 give everybody a little Twitter tour of my man cave out there, my my garage and my uh, collection of monster memorabilia. Yeah, it's a very your that's garage. pretty cool. Look, Twitter tour monster memorabilia. You should it's probably nice. post a video. You know how to do video, Jerry? What do you mean? Do I know how to do video? On Twitter? I mean, yeah. You post- to, do you post a video on Twitter? No, I'm going to have to get you to show me how to do some of those things because, like, like the little the, – what do they call them? Memes? Are they called memes? Well, uh, like the – the vid- well, it's like a, a video with no sound. Yeah, the little short videos those and stuff Those are like called that. GIFs. GIFs? GIFs, yeah. Okay. But, I mean, you would have to po- probably post a video. I, I'll – we'll let, I'll give you the tech terms off air, Jerry. But, yeah, you should definitely okay. do a little tour of your – your monster lab because you have a lot of definitely cool not only uh cool monster stuff but a lot of sports stuff browns indians um just a lot of great your garage man. superheroes superheroes everywhere i mean if you peek into a garage you usually see you know t- uh you use tools and maybe a fridge and maybe you know just random objects but if you look in jerry lawler's <laughs> garage you see a batmobile a 10-foot hulk and uh, superman batman uh, superman Deadpool, uh, just spider-man all kind of stuff. Oh, man. But, yeah, definitely next week's show is going to be uh, great. Uh, last week's show is still being talked about on social media. Um, the, our show with Jim Cornette and, and Austin Idol, notably the segment with Buff Bagwell's rates for his male gigolo <laughs> profession. Did Buff uh, say anything to you uh, before you? Hey, you know, we, had, we had a match, and that yeah. was the other thing. We had a match in Memphis at Handy Park last week. Uh, a live outdoor match and just, you know, just kind of a, a, a thrown together, a little thrown together show that turned out so well that uh, John Shivers, the, the guy, the head of the Beale Street Association and all the other Beale Street people, it, it drew a really good crowd. Of course, you know, anytime something's free, it's going to draw a good crowd. But we, we put together a free show down at Handy Park and we had uh, Grandmaster Sex A Wrestling. We had Doug, uh, Dangerous Doug Gilbert. We had Coco Beware. We had Bill Superstar Dundee. We brought in a lot of the good old Memphis names and and just put a free show on. It's a great venue there, man, down on Beale Street. Uh, the ring was right up on a stage. It's several hundred people that showed up to, to, to watch the show. And I wrestled Buff Bagwell. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, a lot of times the big misconception is the, that – that we talked about this earlier with Rosenberg. I got it right. There you go. With Rosenberg and Roberts and these guys. Um, I mean, I think everybody thinks that, you know, we're all, everybody in the business are like big buddies and we hang out together all the time. 
And, you know, that's just not the case. I mean, it, we we booked Buff Bagwell to come in to do the show. I had my son Kevin actually called him up and did the book. And I don't even I don't have Buff Bagwell's number. I don't hang around with Buff Bagwell or talk to him on a regular basis or anything. So um, but that's probably, uh, you know, what people may think. So I didn't even see Buff Bagwell till like maybe 10 minutes before the match was supposed to start. And and there was, you know, because behind the stage there, there was just kind of one big dressing room for people. So, um, so Buff comes walking over to me and, um, and he had, and he has his shirt on and, and I can, and I can't remember if the, if no, I know he didn't say anything about us talking about, uh, about his gigolo rates or anything like that, but he did, you know, he said, Hey, I'm wearing this shirt tonight. Uh, because I just had, I think he said like six weeks ago, uh, he pulled the shirt off and, and he had this ooh, big, huge scar from the top of his shoulder all the way down to his uh, armpit on his right arm. And I guess he, he had just about six weeks ago had shoulder surgery, not rotator cuff, but some other, I mean, it, it was like a major, major surgery. So, um, so he said, uh, if, if, if I don't, I'm not going to be able to take any bumps tonight. I'm not going to be able to basically go off my feet. I said, oh, well, thanks for telling me, you know, uh, five minutes before the match. So, you know, it's another, all of a sudden I'm not going to be able to body slam the guy or do anything to even get, you know, we're just going to have a, have to have a match where we're going to have to try to take care of the poor guy's shoulder. But, uh, uh, so anyway, he, so he's really still rehabilitating the shoulder, but I mean, he, I, once the match started, I didn't even notice that there was anything wrong with him, you know? So, um, uh, but he didn't talk about, he did not ask or mention anything about the gigolo rates and he didn't do anything unusual that would make him think he was mad about it. So I don't, <laughs> did, did, I don't he bring a, did he bring a suitcase in the cooler? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not do that. But anyway, it was a good show. And then afterwards, everybody came down. He came down to the uh, my my bar and grill there on Beale Street. We had a big crowd uh, for the for the meet and greet down there, and everybody's eating ribs and having a good time. So it was it, it all turned out good. Well, that's great. Um, speaking we of, may make, we may make a regular deal out of that. We'll be talking about that some more. Oh, nice. Um, well, speaking of some other uh, newsworthy topics that uh, have have come about in the last week. Uh, Jim and Andy, uh, Netflix is going to be showing uh, the documentary that we talked that you talked about a few weeks ago that you saw uh, in New York during uh, SummerSlam weekend. It's going to be on Netflix. Jim and Andy um, about Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman and Man on the Moon. Obviously, a movie that you starred in as well, uh, The King on November seventeenth. That's going to be on Netflix, and the trailer was released uh, in the past week. It's a great trailer. Uh, you're in it, you know. Some some bits are, are in it with with uh, with you. There's a bit where uh, Jim throws a chair at you while you're looking at your trailer. I took a screenshot of it. I posted it on our, our Twitter dinner with King. Um, but yeah, Netflix is going to be showing this King. Um, this is going to be great to watch. Well, you know, it's it's so funny. Over the years, uh, ever since the Andy Kaufman thing, Andy was so good at what he did when he got involved with wrestling that the, probably the number one question. I've been asked over the years is what 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 was Andy Kaufman really like? What kind of guy was Andy Kaufman or did you did you really like Andy Kaufman? And and I tell people uh, the, the truth of the matter was, uh, you know, I got I got along with Andy and I and I thought Andy was a cooler guy than I, than I ever did with Jim Carrey during the movie. Uh Andy, Andy was just, I mean, Andy was really a sweet, humble guy, loved the wrestling business. And, and he was so great at what he did when, you know, when, when he, when he was on the shows, I mean, he just made the people despise him. He was so good at playing the bad guy. And that's the way Andy described it. He said, I love to play the bad guy. And so, um, then when we did the movie with Jim Carrey, I, Jim Carrey, and that's how this whole this whole Netflix movie came about. For 80 days of shooting that movie at Universal, um, Jim Carrey became, or in his mind, he became Andy Kaufman. Except he wasn't. He well, maybe he was. I don't know. I don't know if he was. You'll 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 understand it more when you see the movie. Uh, I guess to him he was playing the bad guy, but but to everyone else around him, he was just being a bad guy. And so I didn't, you know, I didn't really get along with Ca uh, with Jim Carrey uh, all during the shooting of the movie. I didn't afterwards. I didn't like Jim Carrey, uh, and and so 
I, and I didn't even realize that all of this behind the scenes footage was even being shot at the time, but it was all, it was all shot. And, and now they've put it together in a, in a, in a movie form and documentary form. And, and as you said, it's been sold to Netflix and it's premiering on November 17th. And, and I got a chance to go up when I was up for SummerSlam in New York, they brought me over to the vice uh, headquarters and they screened the movie for me personally up there. And that was, you know, I got to see the whole movie already. And it's it's amazing uh, to see. And, and especially, I mean, you know, it, naturally, it's mostly about Jim Carrey. And it's Jim Carrey up today with the with the big beard and uh, this strange look and all of this sort of stuff. And, and I really, in watching that movie, uh, you really need to see it because I think that, I think that when Jim Carrey got so deep into the character of Andy Kaufman and playing the character of Andy Kaufman, I I really believe that that changed Jim Carrey's life, and I think he he talks about that during during this movie. I believe it made a, a totally different person out of what uh, from the person that Jim Carrey was before he started filming this movie, and. Um, uh, it's it's really interesting, and there's so much of it. So much of the movie is about the interaction that that Jim and I had during you know while we were su- shooting the Andy Kaufman uh, wrestling scenes and the and the David Letterman scenes and all of that sort of stuff. So it's it's really it's really interesting, and, and a lot of people have wondered you know basically, hey, whatever happened to Jim Carrey? Where is he? Kind of fell off the face of the earth. Well, this all explains it, and you can see exactly what's going on with Jim Carrey now. But uh, yeah, November seventeenth on Netflix. It's it's called. Jim and Andy, The Great Beyond. There you go. Yeah, I'm looking forward to watching it on Netflix uh, just because I'm, I'm a huge, you know, obviously a fan of yours, but also Andy Kaufman and the whole uh, Man on the Moon movie. How much? Uh, well, wait, wait. I got to go back and say, I got I got to say that actually the real title, you know, because we're, we've been we've been talking about getting names right with Rosenberg, Rosenbaum okay. and all of this sort of stuff. The real name, the real title, the official legal title of the movie is. Jim and Andy, the great beyond, with a with a special <laughs> obligatory appearance by Tony Clifton. <laughs> That's part of the title. I know. A I special see, yeah. obligatory appearance by Tony Clifton. That's because great. the Tony Clifton character uh, played a major part in uh, in the movie and in and in um, Andy's life, and so. I guess what happened was that uh, all of this footage, when they found it, was actually owned by Bob Zamuda. Uh, Bob Zamuda was, of course, Andy's friend and co-writer, and and a lot of the times, Bob Zamuda would put on the makeup and play the character Tony Clifton, when when Andy and Tony wanted to be seen uh, at the same time. If it was Bob Zamuda as Tony Clifton, other times it was Andy as Tony Clifton. So apparently, when they when they shot all of the, when they put all of this footage together and made the movie they did it sort of without the consent of bob zamuda and when they came to him and said hey we want to put this thing out he i think bob said okay well here's all i want i don't want any money i don't want anything except the to be in the title uh the name tony clifton to be in the title so that's how it came about that uh there's a special obligatory appearance by tony clifton it's gonna be great. It's gonna be Which great. is kind of cool. It, it it really is. It's really it's really interesting to watch. Uh, of course, if you're uh, new to the podcast or just listen to the previous shows, um, you know a few in, recently, um, you can go back and listen to many episodes that we kind of we kind of detailed the whole Jerry Lawler versus Andy Kaufman uh, feud uh, over uh, with uh, with audio clips and some commentary from yourself. So uh, those are past episodes uh, of the podcast that you can listen to. If you want to get your full scoop of what happened between Jerry Lawler and, and Andy Kaufman. Andy Kaufman. And speaking of the podcast, but, but before I do that, I want to go back to the podcast. But I'm just I'm just looking at my note here, too, about the, the TV show. All of a sudden, man, I'm just like Mr. Media. My, I've got the new TV show premiering November the 11th on WLMT on Channel 30 here in Memphis about the classic Memphis wrestling, then premiering on Netflix on November 17th. That's huge. That's a big month. Jerry, you're all over the place. And then my birthday is November 29th. So any gifts, send them to uh, here, right here at the restaurant. It'll be nice. So how old are you going to be? 71, 72? Oh, yeah, right. Now I'm going to punch you right in your... <laughs> uh, sp- speaking of movies, hey, though. Hey, no, well, I want to go back. 
back and just say real quickly, because we touched on it a second ago, but you're talking about the past episodes. Man, how well received was the was the episode with with Jim Cornette? I mean, everybody's oh, everybody's great. still talking to me about it, and of course Austin Idol. Austin Idol even even after the match uh, that we had in Jonesboro, Austin Idol, and after we did the uh, podcast with with um, with Cornette, Austin Idol sends me this uh, text message. I've got my phone right here. I could go try to go back and look at what Austin Idol said. Uh, basically, he said, uh, um, yes, let's see. Uh-huh. Here it is. <laughs> he said, uh, oh, wait a minute. Now wait, I've got to get, go back a little further because he's talking about money here. Um, after after the podcast, he just sends me a text message. said, good stuff. The three of us would make a great Q&A event concept. <laughs> and then he said, let's figure a way to push it. So then after that, I'm getting text messages after text messages of Austin thinks that we should take a, a show on the road with uh, he and myself and Jim Cornette. And uh, so, that, I mean, I've, I've, every every day I'm getting a message from Austin. I don't want to let's 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 do this. Let's go on the road with the with the with a live podcast. You know, I got I got a couple of DMs myself from some people and they, they would love to see a, a show, um, you know, like a live show somewhere with you and Cornette. Uh, teaming together. Well, now, Cornette, Cornette has his own podcast too, right? Well, yeah, yeah. The, the Jim Cornette Experience. It's a very, yeah, very, so very, very, uh, very, very good podcast. Um, one of my favorites is one of my rotations um, when we listen to podcasts. But, uh, but, he, but going on the road in front of a live audience, you know, anything goes. And uh, yeah, that's what that's what Idol was talking yeah, about doing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that would be definitely something that would be great. I'm sure a lot of if you're a listener. And you're hearing this. Let us know on Twitter at Dinner with King and tweet at Jerry Austin Idol, and uh, let them know if you would like to see you know, if if they took the took the show live somewhere. <laughs> well, and, and I'll give you another little scoop here oh. that we're going to be working on. Um, let me see. Let me go. I got to uh, look. I got my phone right here, and I got to go back and look at all of these different text messages. Cool. So uh, yeah, here's here's. Uh, I just got a text message from. Well, I, I actually I get them quite often from Jr. But um, anyway, uh, Jr. says uh, this last one. How are you? Just checking in. Seems we're both staying too busy. Uh, and Jr. says too scared to slow down for me. But he says Barry Bloom is going to reach out and discuss our Q and A's that we touched on. So we have already we're already talking about good old Jr. and I going out and doing some of these uh, things. You know, Jr. already does some. Uh, live events like this where he goes out. And so now uh, we're trying to get it together where JR and I can go out and do some, which I think that would, I think that would be really, uh, you know, really, really fun to do and, uh, and really interesting to the fans to, to get good old JR and I back together and tell some of those good attitude era stories. Definitely. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure you'll be updating us on Twitter at, at Jerry Lawler and uh, you can follow at dinner with King. And uh, yeah, take take the show take the show live, especially at WrestleMania weekend. That'd be a big, a big time. A lot of wrestling fans in New Orleans. New Orleans. That would be a great time to uh, have a lot like a live two man show on stage. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can absolutely. You can put on your kinky boots. <laughs> Let's don't start talking about the kinky boots thing. That's still in the works. That's still in the works. My my guy Mike Dacey out in California. Uh, is still negotiating or talking with the kinky boots people, but they want, you know, it's, I just don't know if I could commit to six to eight straight weeks of that. Well, Wearing King, kinky boots. You, every day. You'd be a Broadway star. You can add that to your resume. I don't, what I want, <laughs> I don't care about my resume. <laughs> You can say I'm a Broadway. I always said oh, that was always my thing. As I always said, it's too late for Hollywood, but it's not. Maybe apparently not too late for Broadway yet. Broadway. I'm sure. Like I said before, I'm sure Lauren would love eight weeks in New York City. Oh my gosh! Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she would too. My wallet would not though. <laughs> yeah. uh, really quick uh, before we wrap it up for for this week. Next week, like I said, all about monsters in Memphis. A special guest possibly appearing on the show couple topics when I want to get your uh, get your input before we wrap it up King so okay. there was a, a script going around earlier this year speaking of movies um, a biopic about Vince McMahon and it was called pandemonium and it looks like Bradley Cooper 
Um, you, you know who Bradley Cooper is, right? Of course. And well, I saw this as well. Yeah. Bradley yeah. Cooper going to be uh, possibly playing Vince McMahon in this highly fict- uh, fictionalized account of Vince McMahon's <laughs> life. <laughs> what do you mean highly fictionalized? <laughs> well, I'm sure a lot of things won't be... Uh, won't be shown but uh I, well that's not that's not good i mean the the best thing would be it not fictionalized at all the real story that's what people would want to see the real story of vince mcmahon i mean this guy has without a doubt i mean without any fiction whatsoever added would be probably one of the most interesting life stories ever told yeah i mean you, you know you would you would want the real deal from from vince i mean he's he's <laughs> He's he's Vince McMahon. Who wouldn't want to Who wouldn't want to delve into seeing exactly what Vince's life has been like uh, all of these years? Well, I mean, but I'm, just, I'm Bradley Cooper. I don't know. I don't know. Bradley Cooper. I don't. To me, seems like. And of course, that if you say to it's going to be highly fictionalized, maybe that would be. But Bradley Cooper seems too much of a comedic guy to me. No, he's played. He's, I don't played, see, I don't, he's I don't, played some serious roles. He's really he's, he's a good actor. He's I think he would be. I know he's a good actor, but I, I don't know. I just don't. When I think of Vince, I don't think of. I don't think of Bradley Cooper. Well, who could play Vince then? Who who would you have played? Oh, Vince? I don't know. I'd have to go down a casting list and and see. But I'm I, I just think there would be somebody that would be. Um, I don't know. Uh, Bradley Cooper just doesn't come across as authoritative enough uh, to me. Who who would play Jerry Lawler? <laughs> oh, and when what? <laughs> I mean, you you have a you know you and you and Vince you know the announcing. I'm sure they would go over if that was part of the movie. I'm sure Jerry Lawler would be in the movie somewhere, right? I doubt it. Come on. <laughs> So, I mean, you can just throw anybody in those parts. You know, the main character is Vince, and you got to, I don't know, you just got to have. Well, here's my question. Do you think Vince would want a movie like this out about his life? I mean, is he, the, I mean, I don't know Vince. You know him more, better than a lot of people. Is Vince, do you think he wants a movie highlighting his, his life like this? Is he that kind of person? Oh, I, you know what? See, I may be I may be totally off track here. I, everything that I've seen about it, I thought it was going to be a WWE Back movie is this not is that well, not it, the case? It's linked with WWE, somebody that's supposedly gonna with WWE Studios. Um, there was a, a script oh. that was leaked out, um, but I mean, well then trust me, if it's linked with WWE Studios, you don't even have to ask. To, uh, I mean, if Vince didn't want a movie about his life, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be going to be made well, unless, like you said, unless somebody else was making it. So yeah, I've, obviously he must want to be on board with it. But, but I'm sure. I mean, I'm so, who, so, wouldn't, who wouldn't want to be? Who wouldn't want to be a, have a movie made about your life? Anybody would want that. But I, I'm sure you know a script has been. Well, it's, it's been in the works for many, many years. I'm sure somebody put a script together. But you know, when it comes to actually you know pulling the trigger, that's another story too. I mean, it's there's well, a, yeah. a lot of things have to happen, and a lot of things have to be you know added to the movie or taken out. I was just you know I would love to see this movie and be curious to see who actually does play Vince. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I mean, I just can't imagine uh, when I, whenever I imagine, and I, I still think it would be cool. Whenever I imagine a movie about Vince, I can't think of anybody other than Vince playing the part. Yeah, that's yeah. Vince, Vince is one of the greatest, uh, greatest on camera uh, characters or actors or or whatever you want to say. He's one of the greatest on camera. Uh, people that I've ever worked with. He's just, he's, you know, I mean, it's just, there's, I don't even know if anybody will be able to duplicate what Vince McMahon does. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people talk about Vince, you know, being a savage businessman and you kind of have to be a, a cutthroat kind of guy to, to last this long and to be a billionaire. But when you look, when, when WWE network has like these 24 episodes, and I know you probably don't see these, but they, they did one about Medusa and obviously Medusa dropping the women's title on WCW. Um, you know, she wasn't, you know, back with WWE until she was in the Hall of Fame. And then Kurt Angle, who was gone for uh, 11 years, uh, coming back. Um, they show these moments to where, you know, Vince is reuniting with Medusa and also uh, Kurt Angle. And you can just, you know, people want to talk about Vince, you know, doesn't is out of touch or blah, blah, blah. But this guy is, you know, some of these moments he shares with with certain people. He's just it seems like a down to earth, uh, just a regular, you know, regular cool guy. A guy that you could probably 
have a, a couple drinks with and just, you know, shoot the shit. Oops. <laughs> Look out. You can't say that kind of stuff. Well, no, you know what? You're you're exactly right. He, he really is. At least, uh, I don't know how many people really get to get to be that close to Vince to, uh, I mean, because, they, you know, he has to deal with so many different people and different personalities and, and, and so many different facets of his business. I mean, you know, and, but, but I think that almost everyone that has worked for him and myself included, I can only talk about, you know, I can only talk about certain, um, uh, you know, interactions that I've had with Vince on a, that would be considered on a level other than, than strictly business. I mean, you know, like the first time I saw Vince when I came back from the cardiac arrest thing, I mean, you know, he hugged me they've, 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 and then and we, you know, we talked, uh, not anything about business, just talked about, you know, like, like two friends would, would talk. And, and it was like a, you know, it was a, a special moment. Even, even when I came back from the, you know, when the little, had the little deal where with Lauren and I, where we both got arrested and I had to be off TV for a few weeks when, you know, when I came back from that, I, I went in and, 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 and talk with Vince and, and he hugged me and, and it was, it was funny. I mean, you just said the word, so I'm going to say exactly what Vince happened to me or said to me. Um, you know, I felt the need to try to explain what all had happened and to try to, you know, to, to, and, and to tell him that I appreciate him, you know, letting me come back and all this kind of stuff. And, and as I, as I started to go into detail about what happened, he just put his hand up and he said, King, don't worry about it shit happens. And, and that was it. And he just hugged me. And, and, and that was just, you know, that, that right there is the kind of, that right there just showed me, I mean, that's the kind of guy that Vince McMahon is. He's a, he's, he's a genuine, uh, he can be a genuine human being, but at the, most people have to deal with the, the businessman side of Vince McMahon, but there is that, that, that human being side in there as well, you know? So I've, I've always had a great relationship with him and, and, uh, you know, it, it continues to this day. I got a head nod from Vince once. You did? <laughs> I was with you. Oh. <laughs> we were backstage. Hey, at a head Raw. nod. That's a, you know, hey, well, listen, listen. I mean, you know, when you, when you, when you realize that he deals with people like yeah. uh, on a daily basis, like Donald Trump and that kind of, that kind of stuff before, before Trump was elected president and, and, and mm-hmm. Vince's wife Linda is on the is on the president's cabinet you know and that sort of thing when you deal and when you realize he deals with people like that on a daily basis that to get a head nod from the guy is a cool deal I mean you know that's that's that to me is that's awesome well we, we, you and I were, <laughs> when, when I, when, sometimes I travel with you and we go to raw and you, you get the you know I, I basically am your your shadow when it goes backstage and, and raw and whatnot and you always tell me no photos no, don't talk to anybody. Just stand here, Glenn. Just stand here and be out of the way. <laughs> and you, <laughs> so it was just you and I backstage. You had to go to the production truck to record some stuff. And you go, Glenn, stay here until I come back. Do not talk to anybody. Don't say anything. Just stand here. And I'm by myself um, while you go off. And I'm you know, standing there against the wall. And here comes Vince by himself walking down. Um, you know, through the tunnel, back, you know, backstage in the arena. This is hours before uh, the show. And Vince looks at me, and I'm like, holy crap, it's Vince. And I'm like, I, I, you know, does not like people he doesn't know backstage. You know, he, he doesn't know who I am, obviously. But he just gives me a head nod. He gives me a head nod, and this keeps on walking. And mm-hmm. uh, you came back, and I'm like, Vince walked by. You're like, oh, great. What would you do, Glenn? Did you ask for a photo? Did you, what did you do? I, I'm like, no, I, he just gave me a head nod and kept walking. You're like, really? I'm like, yeah, just nodded his head like, you know, how you doing? And that was it. I, I was like taken back. No, that's, yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. He, I mean, he, he, he has his moments and to him, he has them all the time. You know, I, I'm just, uh, I, I just at, at home there on our, on our counter. A lot, a lot of times, you know, I've taken Lauren and, and Peyton to the matches and, and different things, and they'll have an opportunity to be backstage. And, of course, Peyton's wanting to get his picture made with uh, everybody. And, and one, of the, one of the coolest pictures he had was Vince was coming out of his, um, uh, you know, his office there one, 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 uh, at one show. And, and I introduced him to Lauren and Peyton, and, and he just reached down and picked Peyton up and said, take, take a picture of us. And, you know, and so, I mean, I didn't even have to ask him. It just 
he's he's holding Peyton up in his up in his arms and and uh, you know big smiling picture. He looked like a he looked like a proud proud granddad or something like that in the picture. And I, and that's one of uh, you know one of Peyton's coolest uh, photos that he has of all the all the WWE superstars. So yeah, he's just I mean everybody's everybody's so uh, uh, in awe of of Vince McMahon and rightfully so. But then I think that's the, you know, a lot of that comes from the character that Vince McMahon is so good at playing and portraying on TV. That's why I say with, uh, if, if, if I was in charge and we said, we're going to make a movie about Vince McMahon, I would say, well, Vince McMahon is going to have to be Vince McMahon. Who the hell are you? <laughs> why are you backstage? Uh, <laughs> Get out of my <laughs> on that note we're going to wrap up the the show next week is uh halloween hopefully a lot of people who are celebrating halloween this weekend uh with parties and whatnot keep it safe uh, hey we gotta look at look around we, this there's just this like the smallest crowd of people that we've had here uh in the restaurant at the show you know we're gonna have to plug every start plugging the the restaurant more here on on the show on the podcast because you know uh come on out here and have lunch or dinner with me germantown parkway Jerry Lawler's Memphis Barbecue Company. I promise. It, Glenn, is this not some of the best barbecue you've ever eaten anywhere? Uh, anywhere. Well, and you're from you're from Cleveland. They don't even have good barbecue up there, do they? Uh, there's a couple of good spots up in Cleveland. Like what? Proper Pig is uh, really good. Proper Mabel Pig. Mabel's uh, Barbecue is really good. Um, those are only two I'll plug on the podcast. But those are two places in Cleveland. That if you're up in Cleveland having some barbecue, those are two spots. But But to be honest, King... And don't tell Michael Simon, who runs Mabel, who was a big, uh, a big guy for the Food Network and whatnot. But don't tell him that I that I told you that Jerry Lawler of Memphis Barbecue Company is the best barbecue I ever had in my life. There you go. Well, we need you need to put a franchise of uh, Jerry Lawler's up Me? in Cleveland. Me? Yes. I don't. Yes. Yeah, I don't have that money, King. You pay for my. Yes, you do. You oh, know, I, I know. No I have way. to pay for you. No yeah. way, King. It's not that much. A franchise is very affordable. Yeah, but if, if someone in Cleveland would love to have Jerry Lawler's Memphis Barbecue Company, you go to JerryLawlerBBQ.com, and there's a link where you could uh, inquire about having your own Jerry Lawler Memphis Barbecue Company in your in your uh, area. Man, can you imagine? Then I would come up to Cleveland, and you wouldn't even have to travel. We could do we could do the uh, podcast right there. I would live I'm there, glad, King. I would, li- I would I would live I would, there. <laughs> <laughs> and I would gladly travel to Cleveland to do this, to do the uh, podcast every week too. And we'd catch some Browns games and Indians games, and man, that would be awesome. Wouldn't it? Be- what about our What about our Memphis Grizzlies? Who would have thought? I've started to say Cavaliers, but what about the Memphis Grizzlies? Who would have thought that? I mean, when you look at the first three games on their schedule, they got the Houston Rockets, they got the Golden State Warriors, and they got the uh, what is New Orleans. And who would have thought they would be three and zero at the beginning of the season like they are? Well. The Cleveland Cavaliers are uh, three and one, and we have LeBron James, so that's all need to be said. Well, I know, but uh, <laughs> I just want to plug our Memphis Grizzlies here for a minute. Now. You have the Memphis Grizzlies. We, 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 belt. we got wrestling night. That's another thing. We had wrestling night coming up January the fifth at uh, at FedEx Forum for the Memphis Grizzlies. They're going to be giving away Jerry Lawler crowns to the like the first three thousand people that come to the game that night. Didn't the uh, mascot for the Grizzlies give you a belt? Recently? Oh yeah, the mascot. Yes, he was at the, he, he Grizz man, Super Grizz was at our was at our show there at Handy Park. He sure did. He brought me the Grizzlies, uh, the Grizzlies Super Heavyweight Championship. Do you have that on awesome. your mantle now or something? I do have it. It's out. It's out there, but it's hanging on the shoulder of the ten foot uh, Hulk. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Well, King, um, we'll be back. We'll be back next week about monsters. We have a special guest. Uh, have a safe uh, Halloween parties are ever listening and celebrating this weekend but we'll have a special halloween monster mash episode uh, next week on the show and uh, drag out the song the monster you have to drag out the song monster mash we gotta play that well i can't because we get cop we get get the copyright infringement you can't do that unless you can't even play it one time unless you want it no because because they get flagged jerry we can't can't just play (laughs) something (laughs) unless you want to sing it yeah, you did the mash. You did the monster. Mash. We'll do that. I don't care. <laughs> I get Tom Dunnery. Tom Dunnery is a big part of our, our, our wrestling show on uh, Channel Thirty. He's like our, he's like my, uh, you know my my show band. 
So we get him to come on and do the Monster Mash. We'll put him in the corner over there somewhere. I think people want to listen to Jerry Lawler sing a Monster Mash. I think that that's okay. what they want to see. But go back and listen all to all, right. our, all our past episodes. Jim Cornette, Austin Idol last week. Uh, we had a James Ellsworth. Ellsworth texted me the other day uh, asking me uh, the reception from the show. I told him a lot of people liked, liked his, his appearance uh, on the yeah. show. So, uh, yeah. Yes, definitely. So uh, past episodes on com slash king, iTunes. All the podcasting apps. Have we, had, have we had so? Far, have we had over a million downloads yet? Oh, we we hit that halfway, halfway through our shows we've done so far. Yeah, we're I think we're over two million now. Two million downloads to this podcast. That is unbelievable. Last week's episode not only what was was our show featured in the top one hundred uh, when it comes to iTunes uh, sports podcasts, but the episode with Jim Cornette and Austin Idol uh, broke the top uh, I think two hundred when it comes to podcasts overall. Out of all the podcasts, and there's like a million. There's like a million podcasts. Oh, out there, dude, aren't there's t- uh, tens of millions of podcasts out there each and every week, and uh, we broke uh, the top 200 uh, that episode last week with Jim Cornette and uh, Austin Idol. So, yeah, so a lot of people uh, love tuning in to hear Jim Cornette. <laughs> uh, Cornette's great. Love to have him come back on the show. All right. All right. All right, Jerry, anything you want to say before we wrap it up? Check us out again next week. The preceding show is a Pod Avenue production.